Hello friends, after adding the data from the spring form element to the database in my previous video, I'm going to show you how to validate this particular form at the server side. So for server side validation, I'm going to use Hibernate Validator. So let's begin and in our first step, we are going to add those two dependencies. That is validation API from javax.validation and Hibernate Validator from org.hibernate. The, at the time of this recording, the Hibernate Validator version was 5.4.1.final and for Validation API, it was 1.1.0.final So I'm gonna take this dependency and I'm gonna open our backend project inside form.xml Just open this form.xml right here we are adding the validation dependency and I'm gonna paste it here make sure after adding this dependency your internet connection is on and users have to save it and you can wait till it gets downloaded from the remote repository and added to your local repository now sometimes what happens is once you add this dependency and due to some bad internet connection you are not able to get those files properly so what it does it gives you an LOC header error or a zip exception so in such scenario you need to be aware of which dependency you have added so say I have added this dependency that is javax.validation and org.hibernate hibernate validator so how you can rectify those errors that is LOC header error. you just check whether you have a LOC header or a zip exception error so for that you need to go to your m2 directory so I'll show you where your m2 directory is so inside local is c users so my username so you need to know your username in which you are which you have logged in and inside there you will find this dot m2 directory repository as you know we have added a hibernate validator dependency so it would be inside org and we need to select hibernate and you can see this hibernate validator dependency is there that what we have added last time and you should delete this okay after deleting you simply again right click and do a maven update this update project once this is done all those files will be again re-downloaded by your internet connection and it would be working fine so that's the thing that you should be aware of if you're getting that error of LOC header and zip exception okay so this is the first step that we did and we can check whether our dependencies has been added or not so you can see we have our hibernate validator as well as validation API both been added as a dependency so after covering our first step we are going to move to the second step now we are going to modify our product class because since we are adding a server side validation and Hibernate Validator provides us with some pre-built annotation so some of the annotation I have noted down here for your ready reference now you can stop this video and make a note of different annotation that we have so we have not null, not empty, not blank the difference between not empty and not blank is not empty can be applied to collection, maps and any other class and we can check for null or not empty but not blank is only going to apply on your string so it will check for null or and it is going to trim and the length should not be zero it should be greater than zero that's what not blank will do so most of the time I'll be using not blank on string and for any other class you can use not empty then we have size related for your collection then you have max and mean for your integer then you have email annotation range okay and length as well so length can work with string also range we are going to work with numbers and string but length can only work with strings so make a note of all these different annotation and I'm going to apply this annotation on our product.java so let me quickly open our product.java file okay so what are the fields that we want to add annotation and validate so here is the first field I'm going to say not blank and the message so message will be equal to please enter the product name okay and 
similarly we are going to add a not blank annotation on brand please enter brand name for unit price so any commodity that we add will have a unit price so I'm going to say at the rate mean the value is equal to let's say we are keeping the value as 1 now quantity it could be 0 that's fine so we're not going to add any annotation on that one but yes for description we are definitely going to add at the rate not blank please enter the description for product okay so unit price is done quantity we are leaving as it is and rest of the thing will be same so I have added 1 2 3 and 4 annotation here control shift to add all those imports for annotation that is we have our not blank and mean okay so these are the annotations which I am using not blank not blank and mean okay. so you can add any annotation that you require based on your use and you can give any message that you feel like but I wanted to show you how to use those annotation you just have to annotate it on the field level that if anyone is not giving name and it is blank this is the message that should get displayed so that's what we did in our second step that we added those annotation now in the third step we are going to modify the manage product of JSP file to display that error message because we have not given any provision to display that error message so I'm gonna quickly open our manage product dot JSP and if you notice we are using spring form here okay so spring form provides you with a tag that is errors tag so I'm gonna use sf colon errors the path for which we are going to display the error that is name it means the field that is annotated along with this we are going to also use two attributes that is CSS class so if you notice from my previous video I, I was using a help block so I'm going to say help block and the element that would be used to display that particular error so I'm going to use the M element so I recommend you to go and watch that particular video where I've designed the bootstrap form in which I was using a help block class along with the element M I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna use it for brand name as well the only thing that I'm going to change is the path the path would be next it would be for our description so the name again for the path would be description and next error that is our fourth field that we have selected was unit price for which we are going to display minimum value that is required is 1 ok so we have left quantity and all other as it is but we have added this 4 SF errors element that is for unit price, description, brand, and name. Let me go to product.java and for unit price, let me add a message equal to the price cannot be less than 1. So, this is the message I'm going to display for minimum annotation that is, the minimum value should be. So that's what needs to be done in your manage product.jsp to display those errors. Now in the fourth step, now you need to make sure that that server side validation kicks in. So what you're going to do, you're going to open your post mapping in management controller and inside that parameter that is model attribute, against that model attribute we are going to add another annotation that is at the rate valid. Okay, so let me show you how to do that thing. I'm gonna open our management controller. We'll go, we are going to go to a product submission form and here you have to add that at the rate valid annotation ok let us import this at the rate valid annotation control shift o will add that annotation and the next thing you are going to add is a binding result object binding result I am going to say results along with binding result now errors will occur 
in your page so I need to again pass some information to the view so for that I am going to use our model object which is available in your spring framework so control shift O it will ask which model you want to add so I am going to add the org.spring framework ui.model finish so to show you the import that has been added so we have our model as well as binding result for validation now there is one catch your binding result should come after the model attribute parameter so make sure you are adding binding result here and not after the model ok so always remember after adding that at the rate value again against the at the rate model attribute the binding result should be the next parameter so the errors will automatically get filled into that one now here we are going to check if there are any errors so how can we do that so we are going to use our binding result object that is if results dot has errors now we are going to say return that page element but if you notice something before returning the page inside this model and view we are adding this object that is user click manage product to display that manage product page as well as the title and every other thing so what we are going to do we are going to add this user click manage product and title using our model that's why I have added that model so here you need to use that model dot add attribute okay so here the attribute so let I have already copied that thing it here so we don't have any spelling mistake I'm just gonna copy it and paste it here okay so this is not required here we require that model again I'm gonna copy it paste it and it is going to be our title okay and the title would be manage products this return page is going to be of type string as you know here the return type is string and we are going to return that page but this page would be smart enough to take the values from the model as user click manage product and it is going to include the manage product and the title also as manage products so this is the thing that you need to do to display all those errors so what I did I added an at the rate valid annotation I use binding result just after the model attribute and then I am adding model to pass any data to the view so in that model we are passing that user click manage product and add attribute title as well and we are returning the page if you notice something I am not using redirect so we should not redirect what will happen if you redirect the error message won't get displayed so let me remind you that if you are using redirect here the error message is not going to get displayed you need to return that page as it is and you can use or take the help of model dot add attribute to pass any data to the page okay so make a note of this thing and after this we are going to just test whatever we did so that we are sure that our hibernate validation is working fine so let us first start our server page gets loaded so let us quickly recap whatever we did so first we added the dependency of validation API and hibernate validator for server side validation next we modified the product class and added this annotation that is not null not empty not blank size these are the different annotation which are available and I'm using not blank and the mean annotation these are the two annotation which I used on four fields and after that 
I have modified our manage product dot JSP. You can see I have added this errors element, the path that is the field for which we are going to display the errors. Okay, and then the finally we are modifying that post mapping to display those errors. Okay, so here you can see the post mapping. I have added this code that is if result has error and result is nothing but an object of binding result. pass any data we are using this model so let me so our page is getting refreshed still let us see our server once again check the console so it is still getting mapped has been completed and if I need I want to check whether my Hibernate server side validation is working or not I can simply click on this submit button and you can see the message has been displayed here okay now what I can do I can also display a message on the top that the validation for product fail so that the user can get a useful message so how can I do that so for doing that it's very simple you just have to go here you just need to write model dot add attribute of message I hope you remember I'm using the same message for the display of message for if the user is adding a product but I can write here as a message validation failed for product submission adding that message so again I need to restart my server so now I want you all to let me know whether you are able to see this particular message after following all those videos okay in my next video I'm gonna show you how to use multi part to upload a file on the server don't forget to subscribe to stay updated and thanks for watching